So um, uh, just following in the steps of uh, the uh, two previous speakers, I would like to talk about our robotic developments at uh, DFPI today. And uh, uh, so in general, I will just give a quick introduction and uh, present uh, some ideas of upcoming uh, robotic applications and uh, potential needs for um, AI in future missions, um, as we are the, uh, with a strong AI background as well and uh, then give some impressions to application areas and robotic systems uh, which we are were building in the past or currently are working on. So um, just as a quick introduction uh, for the German Research Center of Artificial Intelligence, uh, we are not uh, only into space robotics, let's say, and uh, uh, here located in Bremen, we are the Robotics Innovation Center and dealing with um, all kinds of uh, robotics, uh, starting in the um, deep underwater branch, so from deep sea uh, over to um, e-mobility concepts, uh, logistics and productions, and then up and out to uh, space and uh, space exploration. And uh, uh, mostly we are um, working on research projects which are nationally and internationally funded. So uh, today I, I would like to concentrate on this uh, center part here on the um, planetary track. So uh, not so much on the orbital one, but I left it in there as um, there is a lot of uh, cross-referencing as well. And I would also like to uh, check a bit on the operational side, which we are looking into because this is quite important for um, operations of uh, planetary exploration robots as well. And as uh, both previous speakers already point, pointed out quite quite well, there are a lot of challenging uh, missions uh, coming in the future or, or on the screen for the future, uh, starting from Mars exploration, uh, going over to lunar exploration, sample return, um, uh, probably also the moon village is uh, still in mind or, or uh, on, on the horizon somewhere, then we will hopefully have astronauts on the moon, probably on, on Mars at some day as well. And of course, there are exploration missions um, to asteroids or, or um, other, other moons uh, as well. So there's uh, quite a bunch of, of missions coming up. And also for operations, as, as these missions are getting more and more complex, um, we definitely need to check on uh, different uh, more advanced operational uh, concepts, uh, probably including force feedback, um, as Arlene already pointed out, or uh, contact-based operations, simulations in the loop, and uh, then also uh, being able to deal with multi-platform operations and uh, integrating higher system autonomy uh, and, and stuff like that. So and this also is related to um, the need of AI in, in future missions. And here I also have this orbital track, but um, we can still see that, uh, for example, for the um, Deep Space Gateway, so for the planned lunar station, um, to be transferred to that as well. Uh, so it has not to be uh, just to be seen as a um, terrestrial orbit, let's say. So this is just a simplified um, graphic highlighting uh, some uh, key aspects for need of, of increasing level of uh, autonomy or of AI met methods. Uh, so with increasing distance, uh, we have increasing communication delay latency. Uh, we have an increase in, un in uncertainty and uh, Combining this, we have a increasing difficulty for humans to intervene into running missions or intervene into uh, the operation of the systems. And uh, this all combined leads to a need of uh, very strong AI capabilities um, for further future missions or for uh, the destinations which are uh, calling for this kind of complex missions. Um, here are some examples uh, 
which uh, we were dealing in uh, Bremen for, for this task. So uh, here in the video, you can see uh, a demonstration of a robot, a humanoid robot controlled from a, uh, with an exoskelet from a different control uh, station within an ISS mockup. Uh, which demonstrates a part of, of the um, capabilities needed for the uh, control for the shorter distance from Earth to orbit or from orbit to, so from a lunar orbit to, to a lunar mission, for example. And uh, for the small distant uh, places, um, we then have also a, a tailor operation of exploration robots uh, with simulation in the loop. So there, a lot more um, autonomy of the systems is already required um, as the latency is increasing. And therefore, we need um, to have yeah, strong autonomous navigation uh, in unknown terrains, uh, as we don't have this detailed information of our surrounding. And uh, we probably also uh, need to have uh, systems which are able to identify interesting uh, scientific goals or points of interest by themselves and uh, perform uh, the uh, scientific tasks just by themselves as the uh, yeah the, the location of operation is not directly reachable from Earth anymore. Um, so this are uh, videos which are pro produced uh, within projects which were running here at DFKI. And um, they, they are from different projects and we can see parts of them in the following slides as well. Uh, now I will come to the planetary exploration. So um, here's just an overview, a very brief overview of exploration capabilities, uh, which is, uh, quite good in line uh, with the aspects which were pointed out in the two previous uh, presentations. Uh, actually here in the video which is running, um, you see a field trial in Morocco, which was part of the uh, facilitator project from the Prospera uh, track. So that was the predecessor of the ABE product, let's say. And um, there we uh, conduct, uh, were able to uh, run uh, over one kilometer of autonomous exploration uh, together with the partners there. So long range exploration is uh, definitely uh, one of the next goals uh, which we would like to achieve in the future. Um, then also the autonomous scientific mission planning and the uh, traversing of extremely rough and inclined terrains. So therefore, we are also looking on uh, highly mobile systems like uh, this hybrid uh, leg wheels, uh, micro rover systems here uh, in the bottom, or even uh, walking robots with uh, different um, leg setups, uh, starting from the uh, space climber here uh, in the uh, bottom center uh, with six legs, and uh, the Charlie uh, robot with four legs for um, climbing operations, let's say. Also uh, quite important for future missions is, are the manipulation capabilities. So uh, we are talking about mobile manipulation here, uh, meaning that we have uh, uh, locomotion of the system uh, combined with the manipulation capabilities of the systems. And this can be uh, done uh, by adding manipulators to rover systems or even like on the bottom right, adding uh, manipulation uh, capabilities to walking robots or even creating this kind of hybrid uh, walking and manipulating robots. Um, for that, we, we need a in-system modular system design, of course, because we would like to reuse uh, the key components like uh, joint modules, for example. And um, at the moment, um, most of the manipulation is very, um, yeah, specified for the task which is needed, but for uh, future missions, it is becoming more and more clear that uh, we definitely need multi-purpose manipulation, uh, at least when it comes to um, 
cooperating with astronauts or even uh, building up infrastructures on the moon, for example. And then, as we saw previously as well, uh, sample collection and uh, return requires uh, manipulation capabilities and uh, the in-situ resource utilization uh, would uh, need this capabilities as well. Uh, so another aspect we were uh, looking in or for several years now is the cooperation of each of these uh, robotic teams. Uh, so we are thinking about um, having a multi-robot system, let's say, which is designed in a very modular uh, way, uh, meaning that um, the systems can be reconfigured by adding different payload items, for example, as you can see in the video here at the moment. So uh, this can be, for example, a sensor module or uh, just a payload box or, or even a sample container of, of a soil sample, which is now handed over to a second rover. And uh, if you imagine that this is a, a, an additional sensor module or an additional battery pack, we would uh, have the second rover reconfigured in a way that it has a new functionality. And uh, to organize this kind of teaming up, this kind of cooperation between the different systems, the mission planning and, and uh, scheduling is of very high importance as well, especially when you are uh, starting to uh, plan for rendezvous points between uh, two or more systems as they have to work on the same uh, environmental map as they have to work on the same time, let's say, uh, to ensure that they actually meet up in the end. And uh, our goal there is to implement a logistics chain, uh, which we um, demonstrated or tested here in, in a field trial in Utah, uh, as you can see in the running video, and later on, of course, in, in the assembly of infrastructure uh, using different kinds of uh, robotic systems. Then also pointed out uh, previously, the exploration of confined spaces is of uh, very high interest for the uh, near future. And uh, there we have, for example, uh, this aspect of lunar caves or, or lava tubes. We have um, the exploration of ice moons, as, as you can see in the uh, video on the top. So. Um, that is a system which was built here, um, being able to be implemented in an ice drilling compartment and then be um, yeah, uh, deployed when when the uh, when it is under the ice to perform uh, to totally autonomous uh, mission operations and, and uh, science and um, autonomously. Uh, returning home to, to the docking station for uh, transferring the data, which then can be sent back to Earth. In the video on the bottom, uh, which I can restart, is uh, the mapping and, and exploration of a lava tube on uh, Tenerife or, or Lanzarote. I, I'm not quite sure at the moment, so uh, there are two of them uh, where we are using one of our micro robots uh, with, with uh, very high mobility to actually go into this uh, confined spaces and um, autonomously explore and uh, map the environment there. And uh, there you can also see uh, uh, an artificial in, uh, image here um, comprising uh, two of the uh, DFKI systems as uh, for, uh, uh, yeah, for, for including the walking uh, mechanisms for uh, performing just such uh, uh, missions. So now uh, shortly to the mission operations, um, especially when it comes to uh, manipulation tasks, we would highly uh, benefit from uh, force feedback uh, for the operator um, as long as, as the uh, operation is not fully autonomous because otherwise uh, it's, it's just on a visual basis and uh, the operator does not get that much feedback uh, by 
um, performing this uh, manipulation task. Um, as you can see here in the in the picture and in the video now as well, uh, we are using an upper body exoskelet for this uh, force feedback uh, operations, and we also uh, were able to test it from our control room here in Bremen uh, while we were running our field trials in, in Utah or the um, analog mission track there in Utah. Um, then we also uh, are active in the field of human robot cooperation or here in the example uh, between an astronaut and, an, and a rover um, where the astronaut is just controlling the system by gestures which was uh, tested here um, in the desert in Spain and also in the Mediterranean Sea underwater to simulate for lower gravity for the astronaut to uh, check on how this um, would actually affect the uh, gestures uh, the astronaut is doing for uh, controlling the robot later on. And uh, then we are also involved into uh, research in how to uh, how to design the uh, control station uh, in a more efficient way that an operator is, is uh, even capable of operating this kind of uh, multi-robot uh, systems in, in uh, very complex scenarios without um, having uh, yeah, too much information rushing in. So um, there's a, a field of research in our institute as well. I'm now uh, coming to a quick conclusion and outlook. So um, as we probably can agree, the, the mission scenarios are getting more ambitious and complex in the future, uh, which leads to an increasing need for robotic applications. Um, this not, is not only given for Mars and moon exploration, but also for deep space exploration and, and even uh, near, near Earth uh, orbital uh, applications. Uh, so we need uh, capable robotic systems to uh, fulfill these requirements. And it is uh, quite important to uh, test these capabilities uh, in, in extended tests like test campaigns in the lab or even in relevant environments like uh, we did in uh, Morocco or in Utah here, as you could see here in the videos. And uh, yeah, the, there is an increasing need for AI methods and a need for a higher level of autonomy to uh, just perform this kind of, of missions. So um, this is maybe a, couple, a bit of an outlook, but uh, probably I, I don't have to go into too much detail here because we were talking about that already. Uh, so here's uh, just a list of uh, reference projects where you can find uh, more information, uh, more videos uh, of the systems and also a lot of uh, publications if you're interested in the uh, different aspects. And uh, that is, uh, thank you for your attention. So I'm at the end of my presentation here.